Good morning. Switching up things a little bit this morning as I welcome you to the First United Church of Christ on this Palm Sunday because the season of Lent has brought us to Palm Sunday. The stories we gather around today uh, pull together the pieces of Holy Week. We will imagine ourselves in the Palm Parade when Jesus arrives to Jerusalem riding on a donkey. We will hear about Jesus seeing all of the ruckus in the temple instead of worship and service. We will hear about the Last Supper when Jesus and his disciples shared the Passover meal. Then we will share in communion together as he taught us. And we will even hear how the story takes a turn when Jesus is betrayed and ends up sentenced to the cross. Our children and Sunday schoolers will have a special place in this story as it unfolds. Our uh, uh, children are over here with Miss Kelly's class uh, in the first few uh, pews. They are with Mr. James' class uh, and Miss Missy over here behind them. And then Miss Jen's class is over here. So I welcome families uh, when they, uh, the parade happens. You can reorient yourselves to these areas. Uh, for extra fun, of course. Uh, there will be special movements in the service, times to parade and times to come forward. Uh, when we share in the communion later, it will be great if a parent is near your child. Uh, all are welcome at the Lord's Supper. We uh, share grape juice and bread. We also have gluten-free bread, which is in the little tin cup that will come around on the plate. Uh, there will be more directions when we share in communion together. There will also be a time to uh, uh, place your Lenten change to fill the pantry containers uh, in the baskets uh, as the offering is taken. Uh, we have three of our youth fellowship carrying those baskets with our ushers today. The story today leads us right into the heart of Holy Week. And so our hope is that each one plods through this week, being present to every opportunity to witness God working in the world and through the life of Jesus. This evening, our youth will tap into their creative identity as we visit the Youngberg studio in Woodbridge. Uh, we will be meeting at 4.30 in the church parking lot. This Thursday, worship with us at 7.30 p.m. for uh, a service of Tenebrae, Music, and Communion. On Good Friday, we gather to do good together, honoring the good work that Christ has done for us. Sign up uh, to prepare a meal uh, for our friends at Bethel Center, to assemble Easter baskets, or to do church projects. A service of the last words of Christ will be offered at Trinity Lutheran Church on Good Friday at noon. Join us back here on Easter Sunday as we celebrate the surprising joy of the resurrection at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. with an Easter egg hunt right in between. Uh, today is also the last day to turn in orders for your Easter flowers if you would like to do that. Uh, let me direct your attention to the outdoorsy service opportunities coming up in April. Don't miss a chance to make a positive impact on the Milford community uh, and on your church community. Uh, thank you to those who have made a pledge commitments to First Church. Uh, check out the Spring Stewardship Campaign link in your bulletin uh, to make your commitment or learn more. We give a special thank you to our worship leaders today and to those preparing for the potluck uh, who are hosting that event. Uh, and they invite you uh, to a meal after worship in Fellowship Hall, uh, along with coffee hour. That's all happening while our youth band rehearses here in the sanctuary at 1115. 
and while our confirmands and deacons have their uh, conversation in the parlor. Whew, with this parade of news, I invite you to turn to your bulletin to the greeting that we might share it together. Come, friends of Christ, as our Lenten journey brings us to Jerusalem. Prepare your hearts, minds, and bodies for Jerusalem. We come to worship, to observe, to listen, and to love. And I invite our youth choir. God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving And with that joy, let us greet those near us with signs of God's peace and welcome. Peace. Will all who are able please rise for our responsive call to worship. Cry out, people of faith, rejoice and praise God. If we did not sing praise, the very stones would cry out. Cry out, people of faith, for your Savior draws near to Jerusalem. Hosanna, God saves. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Blessed is Jesus Christ, who did not turn back for fear of the cross. Praising the God who loves us, let us share Christ's suffering and face our path of faith with courage and hope. Hosanna, God saves. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. And as we sing, we invite our children to parade with their palms to the carpet here in front of the chancel.
You may be seated. Yes, and kids, you can sit right down here. Yep, right there. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the place called the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey and a colt with her, with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks you why are you untying them, just say, the Lord needs them. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt. The disciples went and did as Jesus said. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. We usually collect dates. We take care of the date trees near our houses. Like us, our friends look after the many palm trees around this area near Jerusalem. Many people love to eat the dates we bring to the market because they are sweet and delicious. Our friends and us don't mind our chores because we can keep cool in the shade of the trees while we work. Weary travelers are so grateful to take the fronds we, we cut for fans to make mats to sit on and rest, and they always have a good story to tell. Over the years, palms like these became a symbol of strength and victory, even a sign of welcome. One day we saw something going on in the street. People were lining up yelling Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna means please save us. The people were over, came over to us and they asked for branches. We were surprised and excited. Was there some sort of victory? They waved the palms for the special visitor arriving. I wait for it, a donkey. I love donkeys. I guess the people were welcoming the special visitor. People spread our branches on the road for a little donkey to step on. The man riding on that little donkey must be a very special person. The crowd was going wild. We felt special too. Those were our palm branches. I wonder if the son of David guy saw us giving them out. I wonder where he is headed next. As we continue to sing All Glory Loud and Honor, uh, we will continue our parade, kids, and our Sunday schoolers will follow in that parade and then back to your special pews. So let us stand and sing.
right. Does everybody have a comfortable, great spot? Beautiful. My friends, I invite you to join in the prayer of confession. Oh God, we are like the people of Jerusalem so long ago. We are hungry for a hero. We crave some glimpse of greatness. We are starving for the spectacular. We are gathered here like those who watched the Passion Parade in Jerusalem, craning our necks to catch a glimpse of our Messiah. Forgive us when our excitement fades. Forgive our poor choices. Give us courage to follow where the one on the donkey might lead us. Amen. This is the good news. God is eager to forgive our sins and rejoices when we try again. From our gratitude comes new life. Amen. You may be seated. The parade was over. Then Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and buying things. He turned over the tables of the money changers and those selling doves. He said, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was healing and teaching in the temple. The chief priests, the scribes, saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, which made them mad. They tried to trap him. So they asked him lots of questions and then Teacher, we know that you are right in what you say and teach, and you do not show favoritism, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Well, Jesus could see right through their craftiness and said to them, show me a denarius, which is a coin. Whose head and whose title does it bear? They said, the emperors. Jesus said to them, then give to the emperor the things that are the emperors and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to trap him by what he said. Being amazed by his answer, they became silent. The temple, the whole city for that matter, it is so busy during Passover. People fight their way through crowds to make sacrifices, and there are people selling animals to be sacrificed. Even the very poor can buy a dove. Others help exchange money to the local currency for a fee, of course. I was there when Jesus came. Jesus torn to the temple like a bull in a china shop. I was there, money in hand, ready to buy a lamb. But when Jesus entered, the atmosphere was transformed. He yelled at the vendors, the money changers, and those selling sacrificial animals and offerings. I was listening. It was surprising and scary. Jesus was steaming mad. Others were too. Jesus was disrupting everything. I didn't know if I should go elsewhere to buy my offering, I, so I jammed my coins back into my pouch and slinked back into the crowd. 
The, le the leader started prodding Jesus with questions, and I was listening. Me too. You should have heard how he turned their questions on their heads. You see, if Jesus had said right then and there that he is God, they would have said he's committing blasphemy or he's just playing crazy. But Jesus didn't fall for their trap. He really turned the tables on those Pharisees. I rub my denarius in my pouch and thought, what will I give to God? You should have heard Jesus. Wow, he is someone special. At the temple, Luke writes that Jesus looked up and he saw rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, Jesus said, the poor widow has put more than all of the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Today we pause to think about the sacred act of giving, whether during the season of Lent to fill our change containers for the food pantry or as our pledges, pledge offerings for the first church. May we listen and share as the Spirit leads us. Would the ushers come forward to receive our pledges and offerings and the Lenten containers?
Would you join in the prayer of dedication? We give, O oh God, both out of our riches and our poverty. We give financially and we give emotionally. We give because you gave to us first. Creation, life, the Holy Spirit, the Church, and Jesus. May we cherish the ways you love us and reflect that love in a world that often fails to love one another. And may our Lenten offerings turn into blessings that will fill the bodies and spirits of those who receive from the food pantry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus spent days teaching and debating. Then came the day of unleavened bread, the day that the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. So they went and found everything as he had told them and they prepared their Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after the supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then he began to ask one another, which one of them could be who, you, who would do this? I'm John, one of Jesus' followers, his disciple. Along with Peter, we got the upper room ready early this evening. Jesus asked us to, so we could host a Passover meal with his disciples. You see, the festival of Passover just started tonight. It's when we remember our Hebrew ancestors when they finally broke free from the control of the Egyptians who made them slaves. We remember the escape from slavery in Egypt with something people can't keep away from long, food. The Passover Seder meal reminds us of the suffering our ancestors in Egypt and how God saved us. At the Passover meal, we eat bitter herbs like horseradish to remind us of the bitterness of being slaves and all the work our ancestors were forced to do. We dip the herbs into salt water to remind us of the tears they cried when they were asked for God to save them. We eat a mixture of apples, nuts, and wine that looks like the mortar our ancestors made along with the bricks to build for their masters. We eat a piece of lamb to remember how our Hebrew ancestors smeared lamb's blood on their door frames to keep the spirit of death from entering. We eat eggs as a symbol of our rebirth. Then we drink four kinds of wine to remember four promises that God made to the Hebrews. And we eat bread that hasn't had time to rise to remember how quickly our ancestors had to leave Egypt. Peter and I went to the market nearby to purchase all the food we need for the Passover meal. Then told Jesus it was ready. What a surprise it was when after he gathered us to eat, he went off script said the bread was actually his body which is broken for us. He picked up the chalice of wine and said, this is really his blood which was being shed for us. Jesus took the symbols of God's love for our Hebrew people and transformed them into symbols 
of how far he would take his love for us. But Jesus said, your body is not broken and you have no cuts or wounds that are bleeding. Then he explained that one of us would betray him. One would pretend not to know him and everyone else would run away from him. That was a surprise and awkward. Before we went to Gethsemane, we prayed. Jesus had asked us to sing a song. You may be seated. This story that we heard is what we remember when we come to the table to share in the Last Supper. This meal is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. When we gather at this table together, it is good and right to give thanks, so let us pray. Thank you, Creator, who comes in humble ways and by glorious means. We are thankful for the blessings and good news you bring to our lives, for families, for spring, for generosity to and from the food pantry. We are grateful for your power and compassion to connect us by your spirit to your people in all times and places and to tend to those whom we love as we pray for them now, for Molly Rose and Don, Annie, Anna and Kelsey, Rita and Jonathan, John and Karen, Jan and Peter, Faith, Roxana, for Bill and Drew and Susan. Bless them with your healing spirit. Because of Christ's resurrection, we pray for those who have died and the ones who grieve them. We lift up Mary Conklin and pray for Dennis's family. We lift up the family of Louis Gruber and pray for Will's family. We lift up the families of Evelyn, Haley, William, Mike, Cynthia and Catherine, who were killed in Tennessee. We lift up the family of Robert Brett. We lift up the communities devastated by tornadoes in the South and Midwest. We lift up those mourning the soldiers who died in the helicopter crash. Comfort those who mourn with your generous spirit, O oh God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit's blessing upon this cup and this bread, on our prayers and our gifts, on us and your church. Strengthen us with this meal and your story. Amen. We remember Jesus gathered his disciples for the Passover meal, took the bread, and gave thanks and broke it, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, 
saying to his disciples, This cup is the new covenant, which is sealed by my blood, and which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Be present with us as we share this meal and every day as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. First, we will share the bread, the one loaf recognizing our unity. When the plate comes to you, you will hold the plate for the person beside you to be served. The bread in the foil cup is gluten-free for those who might need it. Once everyone has received, we will eat the bread together to show our unity in Christ. Take and eat. Now we will share the cup. When the plate is passed, please hold the plate so that others may be served and then allow someone to serve you. To represent our individuality in God's eyes, please drink the cup when, uh, drink the juice when the Spirit leads you.
Let us give thanks in prayer. Generous God, thank you for refreshing us at your table. Strengthen our faith, deepen our understanding, and increase our love for one another. Amen. The disciples had not been gone long from eating at the table with Jesus when the story took a surprising turn there in Gethsemane. Listen. While Jesus was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? Then the authorities seized Jesus. The disciples scattered in fear, and Jesus was led away to the high priest. Peter, though, trailed them from a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat together, Peter sat among the crowds, and then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, You also were with them. This man was also with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You, yes, also were one of them. But Peter said, I am not. Later still, another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he, as a Galilean, and his accent betrays him. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows this morning, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Jesus was taken to the religious leaders, then sent to the government officials. Pilate, the governor, wanted to release Jesus, address the crowds, but many of them kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! Their shouting prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict. Their demand should be granted. Pilate handed Jesus over. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away, carrying their crosses to be put to death with Jesus. And from the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. I invite the children to come back forward, and you'll gather on the carpet up there. Thank you. And Adam, you'll need to come around. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and if you can bring your palms, we'll give you your palms too. Fantastic. You have done such a beautiful job sharing our story today. I really appreciate you. You guys, when we only hear about the story of the Palm Parade, we think it sounds pretty upbeat, right? Pretty happy for Jesus when he enters the big city of Jerusalem. People are shouting nice things about him. There is hope that he's going to change things for them and for the better. But it turns out that Jesus surprised the people at every turn that week. He surprises the people at the parade. And he surprises the people in the temple and even his own disciples. Jesus surprises them when things get tense, too. He gets angry with people in the temple. He changes the story at the Passover meal, saying, I'm going to love you this much. Right? 
He even has an encounter with the leaders, and the leaders want Jesus to say that his words don't really matter, that really people should just be happy with the empire and uh, the religious hardline and the way things are. But Jesus wouldn't say that. So it seems that the story from Sunday to Friday turns from hope to death. And actually, that's something that we remember in an important tradition today. You see, we get these palms and can wave them around. Can you guys wave your palms around? Wave them around because that helps us remember that Jesus had followers and friends uh, who were in that parade and who would put those palms down on the ground so that he and the donkey could walk over them. And that was a way that they could show their admiration and praise for him. But then some of us take those palms and we tie them and we bend them and we reshape them and their form, transform them into crosses to remember that the hope of Palm Sunday turns into the pain and suffering of Good Friday. Have any of you ever made a palm cross? Have any of you ever made a palm cross? It can be difficult, right? It takes a lot of practice. You have to concentrate a lot, and there's some instruction in your bulletin for that. Adam's doing a fine, fine, fine job over here. <laughs> that cross reminds us of the surprising way that something so hopeful at the beginning of the week can go so badly by the end of the week. Some of us have had things go badly in our lives in the blink of an eye just the breadth of a week. Maybe somebody we loved uh, moved away, or maybe someone we know lost a job, or they got sick, or they passed away. We remember the good times with them, but we are sad, and sometimes we're surprised at just how sad we feel. Did you know that one thing some people are going to do today is take their palms and maybe even their palm crosses that they have made and they will take them to cemeteries. And cemeteries are places where we put the bodies or the ashes of the people who have died. Some people will take their palm crosses and leave them there where they bury the people they love dearly. The palm being tied into a cross might... Uh, might make them think about how their happiness with that person turned into sadness when that person died. We will think a lot about that on Thursday and Friday of this Holy Week and while we're doing good for others and worshiping together. But the good news in the Bible is that Jesus' death isn't the end of the story. God and Jesus have another surprise up their sleeves. The church community remembers that surprise next Sunday on Easter. And the people who place their palm crosses on the graves of those who have died, whom they love dearly, aren't just putting them there because they're sad, but because they believe that God has another surprise in store for all of us. There's more to the story. And so I hope that you all can join us again throughout this Holy Week on Thursday evening or on Friday for our good works and then back on Sunday uh, for Easter worship and also the egg hunt. But now we are going to work with the children and our helpers up here. If you know how to tie a palm cross, we are going to tie our palms while the congregation stands to sing right on and we are going to help each other to turn these, cross, these palms into cross so if you are able please stand as we sing
We are going to continue to tie some palms up here, and after the benediction, we'll invite parents to come up and um, meet your children up at the front. But for now, my friends, may you go out singing Hosanna. May that palm you waved and that cross you carry remind you that there is more to the story. Go with God's blessing into this holy week. Amen. Okay, so there are some instructions on the back of here.